<clears throat> okay. Just thought I'd make a video see if I can still remember how to do it. This one is a uh, uh, water heater. It's called a parabolic trough. It's a concentrator type. Uh, it's it's uh, standing on end in this picture right here. But we're going to get into it a little in depth. <clears throat> they call it a concentrator because uh, if a square foot of sunlight falls on a square foot, you get the heat from one square foot. If you have 10 square feet of light and you can get it to uh, strike a one square foot target, it's 10 times as powerful. So in this case, we're going to take a 40 inch wide, uh, you know, uh, path of light and put it on a, about an inch and a quarter. So it's uh, 30 sometimes more powerful. <clears throat> this is used uh, on some power plants around the world to generate steam and run turbines, make electricity. Uh, it's very efficient compared to solar. I mean, uh, I'm not sure what solar is today, but it, <clears throat> if it's above 10 or 12%, I'd be shocked. And this is uh, in the uh, low 90%. Okay, so how do you build one of these things? Uh, that That's the theory of how it works. Um, <clears throat> the stopping point for most people is... When you say the word parabola, it's just a geometric shape. Up here we have a formula. It's for, uh, you have to have two coordinates to make a, a point on a piece of paper. The distance from uh, the x-axis and the distance from the y-axis. So what we do is we, we're going to uh, enter a y, or we want to get a y for an x. So we pick any x we want. It can be a, a quarter of an inch, an inch, two inches, whatever squared and divided by 4f. f is the focal length. <clears throat> That's where all the light concentrates out of the uh, uh, the parabola. It all passes through a point. So there's a chart here. And these are the uh, uh, x's and the, and the y's that were calculated off the x's. The x's here on the uh, left, a quarter, a half, three quarters, one and a quarter, two, three, Something 0.25. Uh, anyway, um, and down at the bottom, uh, when I plotted this, I found that I needed a couple points past, past, oh golly, what did I did? Oh, I didn't. I didn't do that. The computer did that. It turned itself off because nobody's touched it things in a while. I, I would worry about the uh, jiggly camera thing, but nobody watches my videos, so it doesn't make any difference. If if I actually had 10 or 12 people watching them, I'd do something. Um, this is uh, a graph. I'm doing this on a computer because I got one here, but you can use a piece of paper and a yardstick. Uh, uh, golly. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the... Uh, the lines down here at the, the vertical lines are the Y lines measured off. Hey, I can put a pointer here. Where am I? Okay. This black line is measured over different amounts. Uh, that's the X coordinates. And this blue line is measured up by different amounts. And that's the uh, Y coordinates. And you can't see them over here because I, I raced the lines the other side. But these are the dots that uh, all those things generated. <clears throat> that's, that's the only math. That's the only hard part of this whole thing. Now, we're going to come down here and look at something. These uh, purple vertical lines and reddish-brown vertical lines, those are all parallel because the sun's a long way from this ball of dirt. So they're basically all exactly parallel when they get here at least for our purposes, they come down and they hit this uh, parabola down here and they bounce off at exactly the same angle as they hit it coming in. And uh, those lines all converge at the focal point. That's this, uh, this round circle here. And I'm not so sure why this thing is not focused and better than it is. Maybe I need to do something with...
this to get it closer. Nap, nap, that didn't do it either. Okay, <clears throat> they all hit through a, a particular uh, point. Now, when you shift your um, um, when the sun shifts, that's on that train. Okay, this is showing the, the collector tilted seven degrees uh, uh, away from pointing straight at the sun. You'll see the lines of light coming in. They're, they're coming from seven degrees away. Now, you'll see that that doesn't go through the focal point anymore. It goes, uh, some of it goes through it, some of it goes above it, and some of it goes below it. Uh, only the heat that hits it is going to concentrate the energy and uh, heat the water. So, to be able to operate, in this case, this is seven degrees uh, out. So, um, that's seven to the left, seven to the right, 14 degrees um, of possible uh, misalignment. What I did was I sent the, uh, uh, the water down through the center pipe like it was aligned, connected all three pipes together at the other end, and that makes the water go back through the outside too, so both your connections are on the same end. Uh, much more convenient for plumbing it, or if you have a uh, a water storage tank sitting beside it on, on one end, uh, the uh, lines are shorter. Um, you can, this could also uh, be uh, aimed. Well, I wish I could be more steady. Give me a second. Mike can do something. No, it's just a shaky. Um, and what this lets it do is all the, it's, until you go past about uh, eight and a half degrees, all the light that comes into the collector goes into the water. Um, we need to do something here. I'm not sure what. Bam. <laughs> there we go. Now I can get back some. Okay, you can see it coming in uh, <clears throat> seven degrees out. Uh, the ones on the left are hitting below the, uh, the 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 center pipe, the focal length pipe, and the ones on the right are hitting uh, pretty much above it. <clears throat> now, the ones that come in and hit the pipe, you're still putting as much energy in. It's just not uh, concentrated, but the energy is going into the water. So, from minus seven to plus seven, uh, I don't have to move this collector. It collects every bit of energy that hits it goes into the uh, into the water. If I uh, want to uh, tilt one side up uh, twice a year and tilt the other side up twice a year uh, to go the 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 four four seasons, then it's always within this. So it doesn't really need a tracking system. Um, Well, uh, something written on the screen here. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is this is the shakiest video that's ever been on YouTube. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not drunk. Uh, 11.539 inches reflector hits the upper pipe. 34.46 inches hits the lower pipes. Um, this down here is uh, the latitude of where this thing is being built. It's in uh, Marigondon, Philippines, on Leyte. Um, Luzon, on Luzon, south of Manila. 14 degrees, 16 minutes, 30.80 uh, seconds north latitude. So if I, if I convert 16 sixtieths and 30.80, 36 hundredths, and add them all together, I get 14.2671 degrees. Uh, uh, that's my midpoint. That's my equatorial point. So that's what the uh, collector is built at. 
if you set it flat on the ground, uh, it's at 14.2671 degrees. And uh, that makes a little bit of a difference because I've only got seven degrees to play with, and that's twice the seven, so I've gained a bunch right real quick. Okay. Okay, this is the shape of the uh, parabolic curve. My three pipes. Um, now, the, the focal point on this is 4.8 something inches. Uh, I calculated it at six, and then I measured the top sheet, the, the, the one that's got to have either mylar on it, or in my case, we'll make it out of uh, polished stainless. Um, the sheets come four feet wide. So, what I did was I found out how wide the, uh, that, per, how long. That purple curve is, and it was more than 48 inches, so I just divided 48 by uh, that and uh, scaled it, scaled the whole the whole thing in all three dimensions. Uh, so it's still eight feet long, but that's the cross section. That bottom black line is the 14 something degrees uh, off a of plum. So when you set it down flat, uh, it's already pre tilted. Does that make any sense? Makes some sense. <laughs> Doesn't I understand it? Because I just drew it about well this week. Oh, over here. <coughs> this is showing five ribs, uh, full full size of the cross section, like we just looked at with the tilted bottom. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make that uh, uh, those ribs out of stainless or galvanized. I can use galvanized sheet metal uh, for a test, but if I sell one of these to somebody in the Philippines, I'm going to make the whole thing out of stainless. I just don't want to fool around with it. But it's for a test. I'll put it on the uh, worker's house, and uh, if the pipes don't explode you know, from steam pressure, then I, I may... Uh, I build one for other expats or somebody who's would have the price of three sheets of stainless steel and uh uh five man days I would guess and then uh two man days to install it you got to get everything there and then you got to sort of look around and see how you're going to mount it and how you're going to run plumbing and all that and then uh, you know and then uh, doesn't take long to put it in but you have to decide how to put it in before you actually can do it <clears throat> okay so new sheet here i couldn't get five of these full size ones here onto one sheet of metal so what i did uh i could get four and what i did was i turned i, I just trimmed the other ones off to that 14 degree angle line and I made stiffeners. I got three stiffeners and four full-size pieces. So back over here, you start out with a full-size piece, then a stiffener, full-size piece, stiffener, full-size piece, stiffener. And then the last one is a mirror image of, of the other uh, full-size pieces. Uh, and that puts... Uh, uh, I think there's 16 inches on center. I'd have, I have to... Think about it a minute. I'm not math challenge. I just uh, trying to remember what I'm doing here. Oh, okay. Oh, please sit still. Okay, the red line is uh, one sixteenth of an inch. Uh, or 62 thousandths, that's 16, uh, offset from the actual curve, uh, offset in towards the, away from the, away from the focal point. And that's so I can bend these uh, tabs down and uh, rivet this mess together. Sort of, I'm into aircraft construction, light aircrafts and rivets are what we use. <laughs> I, I, could, I could use small screws, that's, you know, but probably going to use rivets. Um <clears throat> Anyway, it's offset the thickness of the stainless steel 
uh, plus a little bit so I can bend them around at against a buck. And uh, that will put these tabs uh, vertical to the uh, to the uh, big sheets. And then let's drill through the stainless uh, um, to put it together. The uh, uh, these stiffener pieces are uh, they're made from the same drawing, just the bottom trimmed off. And you see, there's uh, like little rectangles around the outside. Those get uh, folded at ninety degrees, <clears throat> and uh, they stiffen the edge up of the stiffener. You know why not? It was material to do it with. And we have. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Okay, this piece here is going to be made out of uh, probably hardwood, but it could be plywood. Uh, if I use uh, oak plywood, which we can get over there. It's, um, it's, you clamp your piece of sheet metal to it. The tabs will be sticking out past those red lines. And you put a couple of clamps on it. And then you strike it with a round nosed hammer, like a body hammer, a body shop hammer, not a ball peen hammer, but like a body shop hammer. And it's a striking sliding hit. In other words, you, you're sliding, you, the hammer is sliding off of the sheet when it makes contact. And that wraps things around really tight. Um, This drawing has actually got three lines. Uh, not knowing how how much uh, those uh, tabs are going to uh, try to get past the uh, the actual backside shape of the uh, reflector, I've got two more lines at sixty two thousandths, so I can make this buck uh, smaller if I have to. Always wanted to use this thing vertical. Man, I'm getting dizzy looking at this. This is a four by eight sheet with uh, the four big ones and the small uh, stiffeners on it, so they all do fit on a sheet of metal. Um, this is the third sheet of metal. Uh, I'm going to show you the dimensions in a second at the top. The two uh, outside parallel lines, that's seven-eighths of an inch because i got a one-inch flange on the uh, on the parabolic surface. That's so we can you know shove some rivets through that. Uh, there's three lines in the middle. The one, the center of those three lines is where you got the shear the sheet across. And the other uh, uh, four-and-a-half, five-inch space there, that's a, a wraps around the bottom edge of those uh, big sheets, the former sheets. Uh, and that boxes it in, except that the bottom is open. Uh, you got enough of a box there and, and all those stiffeners, it won't twist. Um, in any event, is there anything else to... <clears throat> this is the uh, output end. Uh, elbows and tees and um, regular pipe couplings coming out. <laughs> Sit still, please. This is the end where the three pipes get connected together so before they come back. And it's showing the, uh, uh, the wraparound flange somewhat. You'll know I'm not known for, for this uh, terrible uh, jiggly camera work. Well, you won't know because nobody watches the videos. Let's see. 
collector looking down the works end of it. Um, I saw a, uh, a device, uh, on YouTube. I can't remember the fellow's name. Uh, but his trick is he takes a, uh, uh, a vertical plate and puts solar cells at like 45 degrees on either side of that plate. And so when, when the sun blocks part of the plate or it's out of alignment and the solar cells are tilted, uh, they put out less electricity. And he takes a positive and negative off, off of the uh, solar cell and puts them to a, uh, a drill motor, like an electric drill. And he takes the uh, negative and positive, the opposites, off the other one and puts them on the, on the same two screws. So whichever one generates the merge voltage powers the drill. And that makes it run uh, left hand or right hand. And that's hooked to a threaded rod. This jacks up and down one side of his... Uh, He's got a dish, a uh, parabolic dish, and the um, that you know he's got uh, worked out uh, two sets of it in two axes, but the threaded rod screws into a, a nut, and that jacks it up and down. It's a uh, no electronics a version of a solar tracker, and I can't see that it wouldn't work. Uh, we may uh, experiment with that on this, but uh, this is meant to be installed crooked. You know, the, the bottom of it's not level. It's not 90 degree corners. Um. <clears throat> you can't read those numbers. <sighs> well, we can make them bigger. So it's almost five inches uh, of flange on the bottom. Uh. The left uh, shorter panel is 13.8158. And the longer one on the right is 22.7631. Oh. This might be a little informative. I can get to do what I want to show. No, that's that's not uh, what I'm wanting to do. Yeah, we need to find one that's. Well, wait a minute. We got an assembly view to be on that for sure. This is your, your bulkhead, your full-size bulkhead, and that's the tabs bent up. They're on the outside of the, of the shiny side. They're, they're under the bottom of the thing. But the tabs are uh, have holes in them. They're, the holes are in the, uh, in the drawings on the pattern. I got that totally turned upside down or something. Struggle going on here. I never could work that command right. Well, I got it back right side up. That's just another look at the tabs bent up um the tabs get bent up like to the uh inside and these flanges bend the opposite way to the outside that way you can uh get electric drill motor a long extended drill bit in here and drill these holes the the parabolic sheet and all these uh, things that shape it get riveted together and then the sides get put on otherwise you can't uh drill from the outside in and these holes uh, are, um, <laughs> I'm not pointing, the holes in the tabs, like this tab, the hole will, will be uh, drilled when it's uh, when the parts are cut out. 
So you want to, to drill from the outside in uh, so that the, the holes uh, don't run off the edge of the tab or between tabs. Oh, um, there's a, a slight addition here. Well, not on that. It'll be down here, though. Um, I got uh, these blue circles here. Uh, those are going to be drilled holes. That way I can take a uh, one of those electric shears, you know, the, the blades that go up and down when you on a drill motor, and, and cut that slot out, and that gives me the end of the slot so that when I cut it, the piece falls off. There's no no fighting it, you know. It uh, and also when the, when you bend the tabs down, they're going to try to put a radius on this uh, red line, and that'll let that uh, uh, change length what it has to. And the the holes are for three sixteenths uh, stainless rivets. I I could use screws, but I'm probably going to use rivets. It doesn't never come apart. Oh, is uh, I mean I use a two foot wide, twenty four inch uh, wide format printer here at the house. I got a seventy two inch uh, wide format over at the shop. I never use it. I don't know uh, uh, if the ink's any good in it, so I just made it for the one that's here at the house. Um, that, that set of drawings makes, uh, uh, the one that's shown here. It takes a full four foot by eight foot sheet on the, uh, reflective surface and, uh, one inch, uh, stainless, uh, schedule 40 pipes for the, uh, the water heating and a sorted pipe finish could be any cast iron fitting you have. Um, Cost too much to print the stuff and and mail it, but uh, if somebody wanted to print something off and actually try to build this thing uh, other than me, uh, I could probably uh, send it the uh, this is JPG attachments on uh, Yahoo Mail. If anybody's watching this and has an interest in that, just uh, leave it in the comments. We'll get together somehow. Same thing with the uh, um, I did a. A series on uh, stitching glue boats, and uh, same thing. I got full size drawings for all that stuff, but the drawings cost more than the building the damn thing. They're about eight hundred pesos a sheet for the drawings. Okay, uh, if you're not too awful quizzy, you can watch one of my other videos. And uh, please don't hit dislike because you. Uh, Hate this, this shaky camera work. I realize it's that way, but I thought it might be useful to make this thing. And I haven't got my stack of uh, old uh, cracker boxes that I use for a tripod. They're in the Philippines. That's what the camera sits on usually is a stack of cracker boxes. And, uh, I'm you know, you get close to 80 years old, you're just not as steady as most people that think you ought to be. Anyway, have a nice day. Oh, I'm doing landscaping back here, so I might uh, do something on how to, to turn your few yard plants into a whole yard full of plants by division. How you how you divide them, when you divide them, and all that. Uh, we're right now we're uh, generating about 700 canna plants out of 50. Uh, this will be the second uh, division, but there, we're going to shade out this grass in the yard, so I haven't got to pay anybody to cut it when I'm not here. Oh, there's a couple other things going on, but it's nothing to do with, with a sort of water heater. Don't know how you found this, but, you know, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, bye.